Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Katie Fenn. I'm going to be talking about Chrome DevTools on the front and the back end. Um, so if you want to follow along with all my slides, there's a link there, so you should be able to find all the slides. And if you keep an eye out for slides just like this one that are in a different color, um, there are extra helpful links um, for you to find um, uh, other features that I couldn't fit in today's talk. Um, so, yeah, that's where you can find them. They're also in my Twitter feed as well if you wanted to just have a look. So, this is a, tool, this is a, uh, a talk about debugging. So, let's just remind ourselves what debugging means. It means to remove bugs and mistakes from a computer program. So, how do we usually do that? Well, what we're usually looking for is um, looking to find that a certain part of our code is being executed, or you might want to use uh, console.log to uh, just output the value of a variable. And that's essentially monitoring program flow and state throughout your application. The problem with this is that debug messages are not interactive. Um, you have to run your script once and then change those debug messages in order to learn something new about your application. So, the first feature that I'm going to talk about today is the, uh, is the Sources tab, which is for debugging scripts. So next time you're tempted to use console.log, instead try using the debugger keyword. And the debugger keyword essentially pauses your, uh, your script in the Sources tab when you have Chrome DevTools open. And the benefit of this is that it's completely interactive. Instead of just having uh, one or two variables output into the uh, JavaScript console, you actually have all of the variables that are in scope. Um, so you can see all of here, all the global variables, all the local variables. Um, and these are interactive. You can actually double click on, on these and change their values so that you can um, uh, change the way that your application is, is uh, working. You can also expand these and dive deep into the complex uh, objects. And uh, this is a lot easier than just debugging one or two things um, in the console. You've also got the call stack, which um, shows the progression of functions that were called in order to get to that point. And you can click on those and inspect the scope of those uh, functions as well, which is really useful to, for figuring out how you've ended up in a certain point. You've also got watch expressions. Um, which allows you to input expressions that are re-evaluated every time your script is paused. Um, and these will update in real time as your, uh, as your script executes. So here I'm uh, looking at um, a property of the window object. Now also I've got a jQuery selector to have a look at how the DOM is changing. We've also got the execution controls and these are the buttons up the top here, the controls. These are one of the most um, important functions of the Sources tab. So let's let's take a look at those in detail. So the first one is the resumed script execution control. And this will um, resume the script and it will pause it at the next point um, that is going to be paused. And to do that, you create breakpoints. If you click on a line number in the line number gutter, then you create a breakpoint. And um, when the uh, when the interpreter gets to that point, it will pause your application. This is really useful because it allows you to um, uh, skip uh, large chunks out of your program if you need to, rather than just stepping through those lines uh, one by one. So if we pause on this line and we hit resume, then we become paused on the next, um, on the next uh, breakpoint that's here. If you right click on uh, breakpoints, then you can actually set conditions in which um, uh, those breakpoints will pause the execution of your code, which is pretty useful if you have um, a function that's uh, called repeatedly in an animation or in a loop that's happening very fast. Um, so here I've set a condition that this breakpoint will only pause um, if the status is changes to published. The next control is a step over function. And this steps over any function calls and just pauses on the next immediate line. Um, so that's quite simple. You just step through your code just line by line like that. The next one is the step into next function control. 
and that kind of does the opposite. So if you pause on this line and you have a function pause here we're calling get, then it will pause the debugger on the first line of that function call. When the interpreter eventually gets to the point that that's called from, if there are any other function calls, then it will step into them next. So after we've stepped into get, if we hit step into next function again, then it will pause it on the first line of the save function. <clears throat> the step out of current function uh, steps out of that, uh, steps out of a given function, it will pause it at the point that it was paused from. So if we paused on this line here and we hit that control, it will pause us at the point that, um, that it was paused from. The rest of that function is still executed by the interpreter, but um, it's just not paused on by the debugger. So if you want to find out more, blackboxing is a really interesting uh, feature that allows you to um, ignore certain library files like jQuery or Angular, so you're not stepping through those, through those libraries when you don't have to. Workspace is, is a great feature that allows you to map uh, CSS files and JavaScript files to um, files on your local file system so that you can make changes to your source code without going back to your editor. So you can use Chrome DevTools almost as a text editor. So that's the sources tab. Next feature I'm going to talk about is a timeline. A timeline allows you to um, profile performance very broadly across your application because sometimes your script is doing what you want it to, but it's just not doing fast enough and you have a performance problem. So it's really useful for debugging um, scroll effect sites like this one, um, where you have a frame rate problem and you have lots of animations going on. So if you notice that you have uh, a problem with frame rates on your website, then you can open the timeline tab and you can hit record. You can gather some data. Here I'm just interacting with my website and scrolling. Hit record again. And we can see that we've gathered some results. So this is the uh, frame view. Um, each one of these bars is a single frame of animation on my page. And the taller one of these frames is, the longer it's taken to render. Um, the green parts are time spent uh, painting elements on the page and the yellow parts are time spent in scripting so that should give you an idea about what's causing kind of the problems on your page. You've also got two lines here that um, indicate your budgets for rendering at 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second. So if you're exceeding these budgets you know that you're really having problems with, with your animation. We've also got the call stack here, which is the sequence of functions that were called in order to uh, get that, uh, the, the, that were called in those animations. Um, you have line numbers here, you have function names, so that you can uh, start debugging problems with scripts, which we'll get onto later on. So, a really, really good thing to do when you're uh, making changes to your program and when you're uh, trying to fix performance problems is to just benchmark performance every time that you make um, performance optimizations. So I've gone away and I've made some uh, changes to some of my CSS. And I'm going to go again, I'm going to hit record. I'm going to interact with my website. Hit record again. And you can see that it's had immediate impact on the, frames, uh, the frame rate. Of my, uh, of my website, and you can see I'm consistently rendering at about 60 frames per second now. So if you want to find out more about um, painting uh, in detail and, and uh, something called the frame viewer that allows you to inspect individual frames of animation, if you've got CSS animation or you're animating things with JavaScript, then, then the frame viewer allows you to uh, see each individual frame and see what is what is actually animating. That's really useful. The paint profiler shows you how um, uh, elements, HTML elements on your page are rendered up bit by bit. Um, and it allows you to have a look at uh, things that are really expensive, um, expensive when you're uh, rendering your page. So that's really useful. So as I said earlier, if you want to dive deep into CPU and uh, script performance and the CPU profiler is the third feature that I'm going to talk about. That's very similar. Um, 
what you do if you uh, think you have a problem with, script, uh, with scripting performance on your website. You open the Profiles tab and click Start. You interact with your website again. Click Stop. And you can see that we've gathered some results. So this is the result of a CPU profile. And essentially what it is, is it's a long list of all the functions that were called um, while you're doing a given action on, uh, while you're profiling. And there's two sets of times, there's two columns of times um, that were spent in those functions. So the self time is the, just the time spent executing that function and its own statements. The total time includes any function calls as well, and that's significant for debugging your code because often we're using uh, libraries such as jQuery to manipulate DOM objects. Um, on the back end, we're using uh, libraries for um, uh, file system uh, calls. We're using it for database manipulation, AJAX calls. Um, usually, it's, it's the code that we're running in our application that we want to debug. So uh, I would say the total time is usually more significant for when you're debugging your own code. So let's pick out one function in particular. This is the on scroll function. This is the main function in my uh, script that's responsible for animating all the elements on my page. You can see that it's consuming about 0.44% of all the CPU time while I was profiling. And I think I, think I can you know, improve on that. So I've gone away. I've made some changes and optimized my JavaScript. I click Start and interact with my page again. I've removed some of the animation and some of the DOM manipulation that I was doing. So hopefully we should see an improved, improved result. So here's that, it would be equivalent to that function again. And now it's, in, now it's consuming about 0.03% of all the CPU time. So that's a big improvement again. So that's Chrome DevTools on the client. Maybe we could use Chrome DevTools in the back end. Well, one of the um, benefits of open sourcing Chrome DevTools um, is that uh, Node Inspector is a project that's been written that um, uh, hooks Chrome DevTools into uh, the Node.js debugger. So you can use a very familiar interface in order to debug your Node.js scripts. So let's have a look at how that works. It's really easy to install. You can just uh, install it using npm. And once that is installed, you can use the node debug command to uh, start your script. And it launches a locally hosted version of Chrome DevTools um, that you can open in a browser and start debugging your scripts. And that debug break parameter is actually really useful and worth noting because uh, that will pause your script on the very first line uh, so that you can start uh, to go through your source, start making breakpoints so that your application doesn't start running away from you, and um, so you can take your time and set things up. So I've taken that URL that was output on the command line, I've put it into a browser, and we can see that we have Chrome DevTools, essentially. Um, it has all the features that are really fundamental for debugging scripts, so Things like the um, elements tab that you're used to on the front end won't be here, but we've got the sources tab and the profiling tab and the JavaScript console. We can see, as I said, it's just been paused on the very first line, so we can start placing breakpoints and start debugging our code. So this is a, uh, my ghost blog. It's an express app. So what we could do is that we could debug the author page, for example. So I'm going to click on the line number in the author page controller, find a link to an author page. So this is my author page that I'm requesting. And we can see it's paused on the first line of that function where we put the breakpoint. So this is all interactive. We could change the way that this, um, this application is running. So what could we do? Well, Instead of um, serving up Katie's author page, why don't we change the URL slug instead to serve up Lewis's instead? So we're going to change that to Lewis and scope variables. 
and we're going to hit resume and we're going to see what's served up. As you can see, this is clearly Lewis's page because I'm not that thrilled about red pandas, but he loves them. So that's pretty much it. If you want to find out more about what you can do with Chrome DevTools, its, it's features are just absolutely expansive. Um, there are some uh, plugins that are really useful for um, inspecting Angular apps, um, Ember apps, and React apps, uh, respectively. Um, the Breakpoint is a really good uh, podcast that's, uh, that's presented by Paul Irish and Adi Osmani, and that just covers it in absolute detail. It's really useful, really great source of information. And also, other dev tools are available, of course, because we have uh, uh, browsers other than, Fi uh, other than Chrome, so we have Firebox, uh, Firefox, Developer Tools, and Firebug for Firefox. Um, Internet Explorer these days also has pretty sophisticated developer tools as well. Um, and also you can, you can use uh, Chrome and Safari to uh, debug mobile browsers on iOS and on Android as well. Well worth looking into those. These also have very, very consistent features with um, Chrome DevTools. Um, it's evolving kind of a language that's very consistent across all of them. So if you learn to use one, you should be able to find your way around others as well. So, quick summary, uh, DevTools has a huge ros roster of features that is well worth finding out about. Sources tab is for debugging application flow and state. Timeline is for debugging performance broadly across your applications. Profiles tab is for uh, debugging script in detail. And Node Inspector is for debugging Node.js scripts on the server. Quick shout out to Invika, who have paid for me to be here. We're hiring across the company, uh, so go and check us out. And that's it. So I'm Katie underscore Fen on Twitter. Um, uh, my slides are there, and I've put some of the videos up as well. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for voting for my talk. Uh, happy to answer your questions upstairs. Thank you.